In today's video, I'm going over i3 window manager and should you use it? How do you set it up and configure it? And what entails learning it? Because there's so many how-to guides out there, but all of them seem pretty complex. So I'm gonna break that down right now. So i3 is a window manager, not a desktop environment, but a window manager. Most people get this a little bit confused because when you select, let's say, GNOME or KDE or uh, XFCE, at the login screen, when you install i3, it would also become an option. So you would actually boot into i3 desktop environment. Let's just go ahead and call it that. But it's lacking in so many areas, that's why people don't call it a desktop environment, such as there's no settings menu. There's no, uh, really all it is is a window manager. That's why people call it i3 window manager. I think it's really important to hit home because you need to customize it and tinker around in config files to really maximize it. So if you are look on like the Unix porn Reddit website, you'll see all these gorgeous layouts of, you know, as far as the how Linux looks and just just all these wonderful, wonderful setup systems. But these people worked probably hours, if not days, perfecting that look and getting i3 to function just right for them. And once it's done, uh, it, it is very, very functional, it makes you far more efficient than using a standard old school desktop environment. But is it right for you? Well, I can't answer that question for you. I can tell you right now, it's not, I haven't grown accustomed to it, so therefore I don't like it. Um, there's aspects of about it that I love, but I, something in my brain, I just can't quite rewire it just yet because you can't take how you do your workflows and put it right into i3 and go, okay, I hit my start menu, I hit my search and then do that. No, you can't do that. You have to rework how you retrain your brain to go, okay, I'm gonna set up these workspaces and I'm not a big workspace guy. So that's why a lot of this i3 is particularly um, harder for me because I really have not really utilized many workspaces in my workflows. Uh, I work heavily on hotkeys to launch certain programs and then move them around using a mouse. I3 is meant for keyboard shortcuts and workspaces. Once you get those workspaces set, let's say you can create a workspace for recording this video. And then you can say, okay, I want my OBS over here. Here's my notes for, for the actual video. And then here's the presentation screen up here. You can set all that up in a simple workspace and have that launch every single time you start your computer. And then when it's time to record, you just go uh, your mod key, which I use Windows, and then type two or three or whatever it might be for that specific workspace and off you go. So as you can see, instead of launching each one of those programs, you can already have it set up and just to do that. So you just hit one function, you know, just a flick of a key and you'd be in working on your stuff. So that's the power of i3. I just wanted to clarify that real fast. And if this sounds like, hey, that's something you want to take on, you want to rewire your brain how you traditionally do it right now, or maybe you already are a huge uh, keyboard shortcut guy and workspaces, man, i3 would probably be a perfect fit for you. So let's get into the configuration and installation. As far as the configuration and installation, really uh, there's two packages you can use. You can use the traditional i3wm or the i3 gaps. Uh, if you want to beautify your desktop and you want to uh, have a nice background and some other things like that, have gaps between your windows, you're gonna want i3 gaps. However, if you're a minimalist, and you don't care about the look of your desktop, you're just gonna want the standard i3 window manager with no gaps and the windows will take up 100% of your desktop. So it doesn't even matter if you have a background because you'll be utilizing it all the time. So let's, uh, I created a GitHub over the specific thing and you can go into it, it's just the Chris Titus Tech GitHub and it's i3 config and it'll show you all the packages you need to install and also put it down below in the description. So check that out. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the actual configuration. 
So let's start with the reference and I don't change any of the actual default hotkeys in this. So um, just be aware, you can actually change these around and many configuration videos do just that. However, I wanna break down just the basics of this. This reference card, you know, your mod key, which I usually set it to Windows. When you first run i3, you'll do the i3 config and it will set all these hotkeys as you see them here on the reference card. This is found on the i3wm.org. I'll leave the link below as well. So as you see here, uh, mod key enter will open up a new terminal and then um, various different things. I, I'm not going to go through each one of these. I just want to kind of touch on some of the few ones that I find myself using all the time. Uh, from the basics, the terminal one I do use quite a bit. As far as moving around, I like holding the mod key and using my arrow keys, not the JKL or the semicolon. Um, it's the same thing. It's not listed here, actually. Now, when you move them up and left, instead of using you know, the mod key shift, I use up and down to actually move those around my workspaces. So that is uh, the same. Um, just, just remember that the JKL semicolon if you have a full on you know regular keyboard with the arrow keys it i find it just easier in my mind you may like the jkl semicolon total user preference there as far as windows like let's say i wanted to go full screen with this window mod key f would toggle it full screen meaning if you have this whole matrix of windows and i3 that will do that and then doing a uh, vertical and horizontal splits this is almost a toggle so like let's say you're creating a bunch of uh terminals so let's go ahead i'm going to switch the top here just to illustrate this point we'll go up to the top and let's say i wanted to create a new terminal i hold mod key and hit enter and I hold mod key and hit enter again. You see how it goes to horizontally. Now, if I wanted to go vertically, I just go mod key V and then I do it again. And you see now I'm going vertical. So uh, j just to know. And then to quit this one, I just hold mod key shift Q and it goes ahead and backs that out. So uh, just uh, as an example of that, the splitting kind of was confusing to me at first. Uh, resize mode. This is where you hold mod key and press R and it puts it into the mode. So these are almost all toggles. So just know that uh, they don't actually do much when you first press them except for full screen. You put a window into resize mode, you can actually change the actual thing. So let's go back to the top and I'm going to demonstrate this. Create a new window, hit resize mode. And now from here, I can actually change the, the window size by pressing just my arrow keys left right over you know all all of that so just know that that is the resize and you can do that in any window um moving windows or focus of windows can be done with the mouse but since this is i3 nobody uses a mouse you just hold the mod key and then just use your arrow keys to go between the windows so if you're you got another one you can just go back and forth whatever you want to change focus at a whim so pretty cool as far as stacking tabbed all that let's go back to the top and i'll explain that uh, just remember mod key e is the default which is what it is at right now uh, mod key s does stacking where it stacks them all and then mod key w is tabbed so let's take a look at that so we have three windows all across on i3 so if we go mod key w it does the tabbed approach and you can actually go to the top here and just click each individual tab and it'll flip between them but let's say you want stacked you go mod key s and instead of the tabbed they're all just in a line personally if i'm going to do this i kind of like stacked better than tabbed but I, I you know it's a preference thing so you you choose you do you and you can so uh, one thing I will say now I touched on floating a little bit and I said hey you really shouldn't be doing that but let's say I wanted to take this one and move it down to this monitor below hand here or put it into a different workspace um, you can do old school and float it and then actually drag and pull this down into the other monitor which that's not really an acceptable way to you're really to use i3 forget about the mouse floating windows are dead in i3 in my opinion if you really want to make use of it you'll have the mod key shift and press three 
and you'll notice this little three in the bottom here and there is our floating window so um, I'm gonna go ahead and put that back and then I'm gonna go back to this number two workspace so you, you see the workspace how, how it just kind of goes between and if let's say I exit this and then I go back to two it kills that workspace so you can sh push everything to those workspaces by holding the mod key shift and then hitting a number and if that workspace doesn't exist it will create it on that monitor and you can see already how it interacts how it works how these workflows work it's really an amazing amazing thing so when let's say you're done with this application and you just want to qu quit it or kill it you just hold mod key shift q and then q again and you now have killed everything on this actual uh, workspace now since this is the actual main workspace for this monitor um, it won't actually kill it until i create another workspace and then it will take over so uh, now let's say you wanted to launch another program on this um, let's go ahead and launch g edit so you hold mod key d and it pulls up this menu um, and you kind of this is like your new start menu just think of it as a start menu search um let's go g edit and you can kind of see how it pulls in everything that's installed on the system and you can actually arrow between these and then when you find the one you want you just hit enter so pretty cool and here's full screen and then back so i wanted to touch a little bit more on the config file before i let you guys go i went ahead and pulled in my config i, I work i'm also working on i3 um, just trying to get more in depth and, and really go into it. Basically, you set your pulse, pulse audio controls and those types of things so you can adjust your volume using your keyboard. That's what this is right here. I went ahead and tried out like Polyvar, where Polyvar is actually a completely different, a little more stylized version. And then I went ahead and auto launch applications and assign them to workspaces when I logged in. Um, I obviously use Outlook and using the Google Chrome with the app, it does this nice wrapper so it almost makes it look like an application. Same with Google Keep, which I use all the time. And then um, there's also some other things you should know. Some things don't get loaded, such as uh, I need a key ring, because whenever I launch package manager, it would show like an authentication failure. So that's what this is right here. I would install the PLO kit and the key ring, and then I would launch this so I could authenticate and use package manager like I always have, you know, like I did in XFCE. And then I assigned certain applications to certain workspaces. This means when I launch these applications by default, they would actually get pushed to like workspace two or workspace four for VirtualBox. that means i could always go hey uh, mod key which is windows key four and it would pull up my virtual box workspace so that's how you would kind of optimize your workspace flows to work in i3 and i just wanted to kind of touch on that really fast just because uh if you don't do this i mean i i couldn't imagine using i3 without modifying it a little bit more than what i just showed uh, my personal experience was I didn't like it. I'm not going to move forward with it. Um, at my work, I, I went ahead and did some extra configuration and gave it a go. I've been on it for about two days now, two, two or three days, something like that. I found that, you know, for terminal work, I like to use Terminator, which has all those hotkeys, much like any terminal multiplexer would. So I didn't really benefit much from the i3 experience other than it felt a little more fluid and, and it, it was cool looking as far as, you know, how you how you did it. But as far as the hotkeys, all that's built into Terminator anyways. And I didn't particularly enjoy the workspaces and other things, but this was mainly just as a basic so you can try it out. You can go into your computer, put this on there, and then instead of launching your desktop environment, put i3 on there and then use that reference sheet. I highly recommend putting it out just kind of on the bottom of your monitor. And that way you get used to the hotkeys and pushing certain applications to other workspaces and then just get accustomed to working like that. After trying it for a couple days, uh, I've, I've never been a huge advocate for workspaces and I probably should <laughs> really work on that a little more. I think after this adventure, I will do that. But if you are a big workspaces user and you love your keyboard more than you utilizing your mouse at all, uh, i3 would probably be a perfect fit for you. And I highly recommend you trying it. 
configure it, get, get the hotkeys, everything set, and then go ahead and do your edits to the config with your auto launches and any edits you need to make for uh, any functionality. Personally, I missed uh, some, like my camera drivers for some odd reason weren't loading in i3. I don't know what was up with that. I did have to do the package manager hack basically to get that working so I wouldn't get authentication failures. And then uh, mapping out my media keys on my keyboard for some of the volume. It was kind of a pain and that would have continued probably for another week or two before I finally found a good spot. Inevitably, you could bring in like XFCE and paneling and other stuff. And I found I probably would end up doing that. There's too much I would have missed from my desktop environment to truly embrace the i3 uh, experience. But for this video, I hope you try it out. I highly recommend everybody trying it out because there's some people this would fit their workflows great and it would make you much more efficient just because of all the hotkeys you can do. Uh, just know it, it is a little painful starting out. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that GitHub below and also check out their official website because they did an excellent job with documentation. Anything I wanted to do in i3, I could easily do by following the guides through their website. But that's it for today's video, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.